Hi, welcome to the Beard Temple. I am Chris Quinn, and I am very happy to have a rare guest on the show. Uh, this is Michael Kaiser of Good Beer Hunting. Michael, thank you very much for being oh, on the my show. My pleasure. Feels uh, like it's been a long time coming. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, Michael and I have known each other for a while. Um, I'd say we're both very much part of the Chicago beer scene or just beer scene in, in general. Um, Michael runs just a really cool site. I don't know if you want to call it a blog or a photo essay slash the New Yorker of beer. Or it's always the battle like I'm trying to describe what it is. Yeah. Yeah. If it was a New Yorker, I'd have to have cartoons though. So bad ones too. <laughs> um, uh, anyway, uh, yeah, Michael is just kind of a fixture here in the Chicago beer scene, and I thought it would be cool to show you the kind of, I guess, reporting side of it, the culture side of what craft beer is. We get stuck so much on this show of identifying flavor compounds and talking about how this brewery started and the history of this style. That's why I watch it. Yeah, cool, thank you. <laughs> yeah. But I think there is a whole other side to it and, and that is the culture, that is, you know, what this, you know, this thing that we call craft beer is, and it's a lot of the reason that people, myself included, and, and I'm assuming you as well, mm -hmm. drink craft beer. Yeah. So I think nobody can put it better than yourself, so I'm gonna kind of just toss it over to you. <laughs> Why don't you just tell people what good beer hunting is? Yeah, well I've kind of got a, recently I just started describing it as a, uh, sort of jokingly, but as a goddamn cultural rocket ship. Um, yeah, I, I noticed that. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason I, I describe it that way is because usually there's not a follow-up question to that uh, that sort of response. But um, I don't know. It's been hard to describe over the years just because it's morphed into this sort of uh, multi-tentacled kind of bean that I never expected it to be. Uh, but it started just as a beer blog. I mean, yeah. it was a shitty thing on Tumblr, and then it was on WordPress. Or maybe it was the other way around. It's been so long I don't remember. It's been almost a decade now. Um, wow, really? Yeah. I yeah. didn't know that. Yeah, we're just over eight years, I think. Uh, if I go back to where I can still find my first post, there's some older stuff than that that doesn't really exist anymore, but uh -huh. yeah, it's been a long time. Yeah, and we met each other at just an industry event, and that's kind of when I We met at a it. Goose Island Fulton and Wood event. Um, mm -hmm. It was probably either Old Town Yard or on Passant, the release party for yeah. that. That's yeah. when we actually, I probably, we probably met before that, but I think it was the first time we like saw eye to eye and realized we were both trying to do something yeah. um, and it was going well. So yeah, it started just as a shitty little blog, like anybody else's little shitty beer blog. Mm -hmm. um, and it mostly started as a way for me to keep track of what I was drinking. Um, I had a friend, my, my friend Doug at the time, he and I both went to a thing at the map room called Beer School. Yeah. Greg Brown from Mickey Finns would come in every month and lead a sort of themed class. And sometimes it was sort of like high content, sometimes it was low content. I remember, you know, we had one that was just the theme was canned beers, okay. beers you could get in a can, because at the time, I mean, this is so long that ago. Was, yeah, novel. That was a, yeah, that yeah. was super novel. And then uh, we had one that was about farmhouse beers, and that was what kind of woke me up to what what great beers were. So you had an aha beer. That was an, yeah. Okay. And that's why, we, uh, so the, I picked four beers for us to talk about tonight, and that's probably yeah. a great place to start, because that was the one that woke me up, was Cezanne Dupont. Okay. Greg Brown poured that one into a glass, and I tasted it. And I'd had some, I'd had some really cool beers before that. I, you know, mm -hmm. I grew up in Pennsylvania. We drank Yingling, it was, which was a pretty solid go-to lager. Yeah. And uh, we had a Bullfrog Brewery near my college, which is pretty well known to anybody in the Pennsylvania beer scene. But at the time, it was just a weird thing that existed. Mm -hmm. So we had some really cool beers at the time. But that was the first time I realized that I was drinking a great beer. Okay. Like I didn't this, know if, this in like, my this class matters. is special. Yeah. yeah. This matters, as you said. This matters, and. Uh, and one of the reasons why I knew it mattered is because it would, if I tried to describe what this beer tasted and smelled like to a friend of mine at the time, I would have had to use really disgusting words like sweat sock and barnyard right. and words that I didn't really have access to at the time yeah. to describe what I was smelling and tasting. So one this of, is the one that kicked it off. The, one of the great things about this beer, uh, or one of the best things I've ever heard written about this beer was, was actually written, I believe, by Sean Hill, which we recently yeah. interviewed. And he said it's its complexity lies in its utter simplicity. Yeah. It's like complete pale, pale malt, very low hopping, Saison yeah. yeast. That's and when it. we talked to him about what the word, I think we, we got into a conversation right. with him about what the word rustic means. And I bounced that off another one of my friends who we'll get to in a, in a few minutes, uh, Ryan Burke, the cider maker of Virtue. I was like, what do you think 
rustic means. Yeah. Because he described a beer that way that, uh, a couple nights ago. And he's like, it's just the same thing as food. Super simple ingredients prepared perfectly. They all sort of stand on their own and meld together and create this like very simple rustic yeah. thing. It's not complex, um, but you get complexity from it. Uh, and that was just a beautiful way of describing it. And that's, I think this sort of defines that for me. That's awesome. So I've, I just made up in my mind right now I'm not going to sit and kind of go through, uh, I'm, I'm not just going to verbalize everything I'm thinking like I normally do. <laughs> I'm going to be a little bit more GBH with this. You wanted to go right into describing the beer, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, but, <laughs> it's a, but no, it's I mean, this is the other, this is the other so the reason, kind of stuff. Yeah, so this mattered because this is the beer that essentially inspired me to seek out beers for the first time. Uh -huh. I said, this is a Saison. I'd never, I'd never heard that word before. I didn't know what farmhouse meant. I, I, Greg Brown did a great job of sort of seeding in my mind, like the, the sort of romantic notion of what farmhouse ales were, but it was all new to me. And me and my buddy Doug, we left that, we left that tasting and we said, we need to taste more Saison. I'd never had anything like this. So we started seeking it out. By the end of the week, we'd had more than we could even keep track of. And mm. so we kind of started, this was before smartphones. I had a Motorola Razor at the time. Like there was no such thing as an untapped app. Even even then, you sold the coolest thing on the market. <laughs> that was an awesome phone. I would probably still carry it out. <laughs> um, so yeah, so we started. I, so I was just joking that I said, "Well, we should start a blog so that you and I can talk to each other about what we're tasting." Because he traveled for his job, I traveled for mine, and um, that's when we got. A, you know, we got around a little bit and tried different beers. Sign of a good beer is even for this. I just want to keep. <laughs> I'll take it. And uh, yeah, so I, I jokingly, I had a couple of stupid photos, literally from my my cell phone at the time yeah. of us playing Big Buck Hunter. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I just sort of jokingly assembled on good beer hunting instead of good deer hunting, good will. It was just sort of a jokey oh. URL and you know, everybody yeah. jokes around and buys URLs. I bought that one and that's how it started. And it was just, and he didn't, he, he's like, I don't want to do a blog. He didn't really, really like it. And I was like, well, I'm just going to do it then because I want to do it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's how that thing got started. And it was, wow. man, it would be really embarrassing to go back and look at that thing now. It would be really embarrassing. Right. Man, um, I have not looked at my first episode. Don't, don't do near, it. Just right? don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> keep going. Yeah, keep going. Exactly. Well, yeah, that's, so, that's, so that's what it started. I mean, what it's morphed into now is, yeah, what is, it is now? amazing. Um, so the blog is still, you know, that's, that's what most people experience with Good Beer Hunting is the okay. blog. It's morphed into a podcast, which is awesome. Um, some people look at both sometimes that's two totally different audiences podcast is uh i'm learning really quickly is really popular amongst the industry uh which i'm really proud of because i the people that i interview like i try and i really try and give them a vehicle to where we can have a conversation that they've never had before and go deeper than they've ever had yeah. before that seems to really be resonating and especially when i talk to people from all sides of the industry it's not just brewery profiles it's not just the romantic notion of you know like the i feel like the articles on the blog which are really become magazine like at this point um they really try and capture the spirit and sort of the romance of what craft beer is all about from a cultural standpoint, from a startup culture standpoint. Um, those are the things that really draw me to craft beer. And if you guys go to his site, and I sound like um, it's like a plug, like this is an infomercial, and, and it isn't, but as we're talking, I mean, this is a site that I do think is important, and you kind of do have to visit it at least to see what we're talking about, and then you can decide if hmm. it's for you or not. Uh, but the romanticism and the spirit of craft beer, I, I definitely, there is a tone to your website, uh, to your pictures, I should say, and it is very much about getting almost like a visceral feel for, no, visceral, people... this is not, visceral is not right. It's, it's kind of, your pictures are, are trying to uh, tell a little more than actually what is going on. Oh, yeah. 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 I mean, they have a role. I mean, photography always has a role to be informative in some way, especially mm -hmm. when you're using it, in, you know, in a sort of a documentary style like I am. But it also, photography also also has this other side to it, which is it's supposed to make you feel something. Um, and so I always try and balance those things in proportion because you don't want it. I don't, it's not supposed to be pure art to me. It's not, you know, it's not supposed to lie about the feeling or what's going on or the information involved. It's supposed to be providing information in a way that actually makes you care about it and feel what it was like to be there. Um, that's a hard thing to do. It's not newspaper photography. This is this is as high-end as I am capable of making the photography be um, from an artistic standpoint as well. Which was actually kind of fun because that was... A lot the, of duck face selfies, in other words. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's an amazing amount of duck face in beer. Yeah. I mean, everything is in the background of you doing a duck face selfie. <laughs> <laughs> and you've been doing it for eight years. Really a it's, been a, it's amazing how much longevity you can get out of that. Yeah. Um, 
No, but I mean, it, it became a, an artistic outlet for me in the beginning. And so, because um, when I first started, it was really just beer notes, what it tasted like, where I got it, like stuff yeah, like that. I, I mean, at the time, it was hard to find stuff. I and, remember reading it at the yeah. time when it, when it used to be like that. And then when I started taking pictures, everything changed. That's when other people started reading it, mm -hmm. you know, more than just me and a couple of my buddies who were looking for tasting notes. It was people found it. They saw photos of breweries that they'd never been to. They saw them presented really well. And um, for and me, it was exciting to have that outlet just because I, I studied in my undergrad. I did uh, two degrees, English lit and writing, and then also studio art sort of parallel with an emphasis in photography. So for me, it was the first time I picked up a camera in 10 years. Mm -hmm. Like when I graduated, um, when I graduated undergrad, digital photography cost like $8,000 for a camera. I mean, it was right. crazy. You yeah. know, like you had to like yeah. check it out of the art department to even use it. Yep. But I loved digital photography. I got a chance to use it once and I fell in love. And, uh, but when I graduated, I was like, well, I guess I'm not doing that for a living because I don't have 10 grand. In right. <laughs> And so it wasn't until, you know, I started doing Good Beer Hunting that I, I was like, well, I'm going to pick up this little Micro Four Thirds camera, a little Panasonic Lumix camera. It was like 500 bucks, 600 bucks, something like that, which was still a lot of money, but it yeah. was an easy thing to get. And uh, I started taking pictures and I just totally, it was like getting on a bike again, you know, for the first time since you were a kid. Like, just totally fell in love with what it meant to watch and observe things happening and anticipate things and capture them and yeah. try and capture those moments of somebody doing something unique. And, and it, it's funny how it awesome. I've noticed in in reading your blog for a couple of years now, how it started out sometimes as just like somebody who enjoys beer. You would have some food and some beer at your house, presumably, yeah. and you no, could take some was. photos of it. Some of it was just totally you know, in my own house. Which is totally cool. Like, yeah. And that is what beer was to you and still probably is yeah. to you at the time. And now as it's... Um, become something different. I don't want to say progressed or, or grown because one isn't necessarily better than the other. I right. mean, drinking no, beer sure. at home is awesome. It's cool to kind of see, okay, now Michael's at a cidery or yeah, yeah, yeah. at a, a brewery watching them bottle something. So, Well, I, really I think cool. what you're describing in those early posts where I was at home was like they had a certain amount of intimacy to them. Yeah. And I think people read it that way. To me, it all still feels really intimate. It's just the places I get to go and the things I get to see, um, they still feel really special and intimate to me. Mm -hmm. But to somebody else, it's like you're hanging out in a brewery for two days right. straight. Like that doesn't feel... It's an industrial site at some right. level. But know? when you get to know those people like I do and embed yourself with their team and, and you get to watch them for two days, like that feels just as intimate to me as a couple of bottles in my living room you know, right. with a couple of friends. Like it feels the same to me. I think on the outside it looks very different though. It looks it looks like it's grown into its own sort of professional thing, which is kind of interesting. Cool. Um, yeah, no, I mean, and there's certainly unique and it's certainly kind of fun to have craft beer be documented in in that way. Um, say what you will, like I love my, my blog or whatever it is. They're a dime a dozen. You know, there's a lot of guys sitting there reviewing Well, beers. at that point, uh, from a format standpoint, sure. Right. From a quality standpoint, not even close. Wow. I mean, come on. But, you know, brush <laughs> off the haters. But, um, no, no. Uh, but but like, I know what you mean. Is, Nobody out there is really doing anything like what GBH is. And yeah. That, and it's been it's unique cool. since day one. And that's yeah. always been, it actually came as a big surprise to me uh, that that was the case. Because when yeah. I first started doing it, I was very inspired by, I mean, I worked in the, in the design world, innovation mm -hmm. world. So I was inspired by design blogs, fashion blogs that I was, you know, really, really into. A lot of lifestyle sort of travel blogs. I love travel writing. Like, it's one of my favorite things in the world. And so yeah, you'd mention all of those thing. things inspired me to create what GBH is. Um, but I never really looked at beer blogs, and so it never occurred to me that beer blogs didn't look like that. Also, right. I was just doing what you know was my personal experience, and I cool. found out how different that was. Yeah, and I'm I'm itching to kind of for more of that to continue to happen, and yeah. um, I just yeah want to see people kind of scratch the surface more. There's so much to it. 